say you have a soccer ball moving to the right on a pitch and you want to determine how far it's going to move in a certain amount of time we'll say after six seconds so that's your time final well the first thing we do is we'd set up an axis here so we'd say this is our x-axis and this is our y-axis and then we're looking for we want to find its x final so its final position after those six seconds and it's starting at its x initial position so the equation we would use which I'm sure some of you are familiar with already is your x final equals your x initial plus your velocity and velocity is a vector so it has a direction we denote that with the arrow times its change in time and so its x final is going to be equal to well the x initial we set up this arbitrary axis here and we decided that its x initial was at zero plus its velocity and head it to the right on the x-axis is positive if uh, we were headed left it would be negative but we're headed to the right so positive 10 meters per second and it's change in time well we can represent change in time another way it is the same as saying time final minus time initial and so we know after six seconds that's his time final so six seconds and his time initial well we set up this system so we get to choose when his time initial is in this instance so we're going to say it started at zero seconds so the x final is going to be equal to well seconds are going to cancel here leaving us with units in meters so 10 times 6 or 60 meters. So after six seconds with 10 meters per second velocity, it will have traveled 60 meters, and that is this distance here. And now you can memorize this equation, but it's a lot easier. The way I prefer to do it is to just derive it each time. So where does that come from? Well, we know that your velocity is equal to your change in displacement divided by your change in time and this we can just write another way so remember that delta x is the same as saying x final minus x initial and delta time is the same as time final minus time initial so if we were to multiply our time on both sides then we would get our velocity times your time final minus time initial equals your x final minus x initial and now all we have to do is add your x initial to both sides to get this equation so our x initial and we can just represent that as our change in time so that is how you would derive it but even more important is to also understand that this just comes from the slope of the displacement versus time graph so we have our displacement in the x direction and we have our time so our, it's going to look grass going to look something like this, and the slope of this graph will give us our velocity. So say we had two points on it, we'll call this our x final. Our, we'll keep it simple: uh, x initial, time final, time initial. Well, the slope of this is your x final minus x initial divided by time final minus time initial so this is exactly what we use to derive this equation here and there's another important uh, 
things you always remember for kinematics in one dimension. And kinematics is Greek for uh, movement, so this is study of movement in one dimension. And in this instance, we're dealing with a constant acceleration. So the slope of this line will give us just a constant, or sorry, a constant velocity. So the slope of this will give us a constant velocity. And it's a vector, so it has a direction. But the other thing to remember is constant acceleration. So in this case, your displacement versus time graph will look something like this. But your it'll be a parabola, but your velocity versus time will come up like this. And if you take the slope of this, so your velocity final minus your velocity initial, time initial, then this will give you your acceleration. So the slope of your displacement versus time graph gives you your velocity, and the slope of your velocity versus time graph will give you your acceleration. So change in velocity over change in time. And we do the exact same process as we did up here. And you get, I'll leave you to run through, it's just the exact same as this, but your velocity final, the velocity is a vector, is equal to your velocity initial plus acceleration times your change in time. So these are the two key equations to remember for kinematics in one dimension.